So thinking a bit about what's below ground, my background is soil science, so I'm really interested in the soil. Mm. Um, and I think talking to you, it's something that you've got a lot of interest in as well. Yeah. Tell me a bit about the soils on the farm, like what sort of soil type you're on and what your challenges are. Yeah, we do vary quite a lot as to, so these slopes that we're on now um, are sandy loam over chalk, really yeah. high pH, shallow. Um, some of the, we go quite deep sand in places uh, at the top of the farm, but over chalk, so it's still high pH, and then there's some clay stuff in sort of one corner. Yeah, yeah. but still not not huge clay proportions. Like um, I just think we go up to like seventeen to twenty percent clay or something. Okay. Did you do you have a feel for what your organic matter percentages are? Yeah. And... So it varies again. So I think we our lowest is high twos. And our best is probably mid fours. Yeah. And you described to us earlier that when, because obviously you're transitioning from arable into a livestock farm, you described your soils as being tired. What yeah. You... I mean, they're probably, it's a, you're just a bit closer to a drought and a bit uh, more dependent on making sure you get your fertilizer in and it gets yeah. rained in. Um, and just uh, you need the average year with the average rainfall every month to for it to, and that's fine. But when you yeah. get variable rainfall and maybe you put your spring nitrogen on and it doesn't rain, there doesn't seem like there's much um, much give there to, to get you through those yeah. spells. Margins on the arable side sort of... Um, they're not struggle, but they, they, well, they struggle in a drought, but uh, as anybody's would. But um, I couldn't, we couldn't really see as a as a whole farm how it was going to work with having no single farm payment um, and replacing that with you'd have to do grow quite a lot of non-producing stewardship, op, food producing stewardship options to yeah. try and replace that, and that's not really what we wanted to do. So yeah. Converting a lot into SAM3 and GS4 allows us to still produce food and hopefully get a good outcome for the soil. Yeah. So this field, you said this went in in 2022. Yeah. And prior to that, long-term uh, arable? Yeah, long-term arable. Yeah. Um, uh, off the top of my head, I, yeah, I, I can only remember two years previous at Spring Barley and, and Sugar Beet. Okay. So what are, you, um, what are your hopes for the soil over the next few years? <laughs> I mean, it's... It, Everybody tells you a different answer, probably, but um, I think we probably, now we've decided what we're doing from a system perspective, we just focus on the system, yep. focus on making sure the cows make money and they do a good job and tweaking that as it goes, whether that's single day moves or 12 hour moves or two day moves, uh, try and grow more grass and try and get it through a, an yeah. animal. Yeah. I mean, because from the perspective of soil health, we often talk about soil organic matter as being kind of the key measure of soil mm. health. And if you think about the practices that we talk about that can improve soil health, they're all really, when you look at it, practice associated with building soil organic matter. Yeah. So, you know, if you want to try and improve soil health, build soil organic matter, actually doing what you've done, taking arable land out and putting it into grass, should, should have one of the biggest effects in terms of what you're doing is you're taking land out of cultivation. Um, you've got a perennial crop, you've got that um, organic matter return in the roots and any above ground biomass, plus you've got the, the dung and urine from the cattle. So, so uh, particularly on soils that are lower organic matter to start, I would anticipate that over the next couple of years, hopefully if you repeat your organic matter tests, that you would start to be able to see, yep. uh, see a difference. Um, and what we do tend to see is you see you tend to see the biggest impacts where your starting point was lowest. So yep. if you're on a lower organic matter content soil, you probably see a quicker boost than if you're on a higher organic matter soil. We did some work um, a few years ago, the work that we did with Peter Law down in Somerset, where he took, um, the farm was transitioning from long-term arable to a mixed beef and sheep farm. They took a block of land so out of arable, they put it down to grass herbal lays. Um, we baselined the, the soil um, at the beginning, I think September 2017, when it 
went into the lays. So we looked at um, various physical, chemical and biological indicators of soil health. And then we went back after three years, which would be the typical length of a lay, to sample yeah. again, going back to exactly the same spots that we'd sampled previously. Um, and the two key headlines for that was we measured a statistically significant increase in organic matter content. So the farm went, and, and I would also say that that farm the soils were quite different. So clay loam soils, they were actually yeah, which... really quite nice when we started. Um, organic matter contents and loss magnesium were an average of 7.9%, so quite a bit higher than yeah, you. Yeah. But over the fields we measured from, um, the organic matter increased by 0.3 percentage points. So we were going from an average of 7.9 to 8.2. And that was statistically significant. So it was a, you know, we could In be a relatively short period of time yeah, as well. Over three years. So so that was very positive for the farm and to see that um, improvement in soils. The other thing that was quite apparent was the um, increase in earthworms. Mm -hmm. So we, um, I think the earthworm numbers increased by 60% and the biomass increased by threefold, or it might have been the other way around, but basically we had quite an increase in the number and the weight of earthworms. Yeah, so you can see that like over three years, they've increased soil organic matter and they've increased earthworm numbers. So, you know, we would expect to see something similar on your farm um, and it will be particularly interesting after a few years to look and see, you know, see what you're seeing in these fields. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's hoping. Yeah.